Hey guys, so I told you I was going to show you some of the books I'm using. I thought it'd be kind of interesting to go through the courses I have this semester also. Um, before I start that, um, I want to show you guys a cool pocket book that they gave us. It's called Oaks Respiratory Care Pocket Guide. Uh, they gave us the ninth edition. And the reason I really like this is it's a great supplement for any of your classes. It has pretty much everything in here from equations, ABGs, chest x-ray interpretation. So this is going to be, I don't know yet, but I feel like it's going to be a lifesaver once I get into clinicals. I've already finished two of my classes and I've moved into, into some others. So I'll show you the books I was using for those. I was doing... Um, respiratory therapeutics and we were using a book by uh, Gary C. White. It's a fifth edition just called Equipment Theory for Respiratory Care and I actually like this book a lot better. We, Most of our courses that we have been taking we primarily use uh, Egan's which is a pretty well-known respiratory care book and then we supplement it with these other books as well. I felt like this book was a lot more clear cut. Uh, it had better examples, better photos of equipment, real life photos instead of just drawings as well because let's face it, sometimes the drawings depicted in our textbook aren't quite as close to the real life thing. So we were using Egan's for a lot of it. I pretty much found everything in this book and studied more from here. You do wanna be careful doing that, make sure you're studying enough from uh, the main book you're using that this is great for supplemental information and when I was stuck on anything it really helped me kind of figure out where I was going and kind of cleared everything up. <sighs> so I have a huge stack of books by the way, I don't know. See all that? Yeah, look at that. So I'm going to be grabbing these on the floor as we go. Alright, and then the other course I took was cardiopulmonary disease. Same thing, we used Egan's for a lot of it uh, because it actually has a lot of information regarding what's going to be on the different licensing examinations. But we also did use this book, which is 7th edition Clinical Manifestations and Assessment of Respiratory Disease. And kind of same thing, although Egan's tends to be a bit wordy, this really cleared things up and put it in much more compact manner. Same thing though, I got caught on the test question with this. I studied too much from this book and not enough from Egan's and there were some specific questions of things that were only covered in Egan's. So again, if your course happens to do something similar, make sure you read both, not just one. But this one, same thing. Uh, the reason I like this one, for example, let's go to uh, pulmonary embolism. Not only does it give you all the signs and symptoms, it breaks down all of the possible things you may see regarding uh, what your ABGs are going to look like, as well as uh, hemodynamic information and oxygenation information. I like this book a little better, not to be biased, but I have a very love-hate relationship with Egan's, which I'll get into that once we get there. Recently, I told you guys that uh, I just started a uh, cardiopulmonary diagnostics course. That course has quite a few books. So one, we're using Egan's for it also. And then this is fourth edition, Understanding EKGs, a practical approach. We're just gonna trust that it focused on it. If not, again, I'll put the information in uh, the description box down below so you guys can find it if you're interested in looking at any of these just for supplemental uh, material. It does have a lot of great illustrations and it's nice because the first few chapters kind of just give you a refresher on cardiac AMP, which let's face it, even though we've already taken the courses, sometimes we need a little refresher so that once they start reviewing information that's, you know, pertinent to an EKG, uh, that information is fresh in your mind rather than from a course you took a semester or two ago. So pharmacology, Rouse Respiratory Care Pharmacology, 9th edition. Ugh. Sorry, there's a glare on that. Again, 
Uh, and also along with the Rouse Respiratory Care Pharmacology book, we also have a workbook. The workbook in this is actually pretty good. It sticks with the chapter, um, and you'll understand why that's pertinent once I get to Egan's. So it gives a lot of really good examples. Anytime there's equations, some of the workbook chapters are longer than the actual chapter in the book, though. So how that works out, I don't know. But it's, it's really good for uh, supplemental studying. Although my professor does uh, want us to do these for homework, even if she didn't, I would probably be doing these at home just for the extra studying and practice because it's a lot more interesting than just sitting there trying to memorize it because this workbook also includes clinical scenarios about, you know, uh, symptoms a patient may be experiencing and what type of medication you should give them. So I think it's also really good practice just to start for clinical simulations and the licensing exams. Alright, next set of books now. After I finish pharmacology, sorry I keep looking down, I'm looking at my schedule at the same time. Uh, the next course will be uh, respiratory pediatrics. So, got a couple of things here. They gave us some of our books early, but the two pediatrics books I have, ooh, this one's heavy. So this is Neonatal and Pediatric Respiratory Care, fourth edition. And same thing here, I haven't really gotten to go through it too much. I've kind of been flipping through it a little bit, but that's one of the books I may be using. I think this book may actually be for next semester. I haven't even taken the plastic off it yet. So Neonatal Resuscitation. So that's another book we're using, um, which I think this one actually may be for a later course from what I understand. And finally, we're here. So it's Egan's The Bible. I love it. I hate it. I can't live without it. This particular book, we are using the 11th edition along with the workbook. One of the things that is very frustrating about this book, although it's full of a lot of really amazing information, it is directed specifically for uh, respiratory therapists. When they update editions, <laughs> sometimes they don't update the workbook. So you'll be going through the workbook and you cannot figure out an answer because usually what I'll do is I'll go through, I'll do the chapters in the workbook and if I can't, if I don't know the answer off the top of my head, I will scour that chapter looking for the answer. And there were multiple occasions where I just couldn't find the answer. Turns out it was something that was in the 10th edition that they updated in the new edition but did not update in the workbook. So they didn't change the workbook from the 10th to 11th edition, which obviously can cause grading issues or um, some of the questions are no longer, that, that specific piece of information is no longer covered in those chapters. Perhaps they moved to another chapter, but it's not in the chapter you're currently working in. Now, although, again, that the actual book is action-packed with issues, you know what else it's action-packed with? Errors. <laughs> so uh, I was lucky enough to have a really good teacher that was able to point out all of the error errors in the book as we we're going through them in class. Um, sometimes it was just small grammatical errors. There was actually one specific error where it mixes up the term uh, acidosis and alkalosis two very different things but it was when we were still first learning about it so i would read it and you would realize that something didn't make sense but because i was still just trying to read ahead and understand information before i went to class i wasn't sure if it was making not making sense because i just didn't understand the concept or if it wasn't making sense because it was an error and in that case it was actually an error i kept reading it and reading it and thinking, man, there's no way, this just doesn't make sense. Took it to my professor, he laughed, and he was like, nope, yep, that's that's a big error. <laughs> so um, that's something you do have to watch out for if you guys are using this book. I'm sure that you guys have wonderful professors as well, and that they're able to point out errors when you run across them. But if something just honestly is not making sense, um, 
ask your professor, ask somebody else, there's a high likelihood that there may be an error here. There are also a lot of math errors in this book, extra numbers being added, numbers taken off, incorrect equations. So it can be very difficult when you're new because you don't know what you don't know yet. All you know is that something doesn't make sense. Although this is a really good book because it gives you a lot of resources about things that would be coming up on uh, the credentialing exams, they have online resources where you can actually go and it breaks down by chapter how pertinent that information is compared to the CRT, the RRT, and then your clinical simulations. So that makes, that's a wonderful tool to know what needs to be focused on. So. Those are my books for this semester. Um, I didn't go through my books from the previous semester. Um, I do also have a Therapeutics 2 course, which will be another, again, it'll be vegans, and then it will go back through the rest of the Equipment Theory book. So it'll go back through both of these books, just areas that we didn't get to yet, and I'm sure it'll make a lot more sense after taking these courses I'm currently in because I'll have a lot more understanding of the subject at that point. I told you guys I'd show you my books. I've shown you my books. That's it. That's all. I don't have anything else. <laughs> so those are my books. Let me know if you guys have used any of these books, especially with uh, the Egan's 11th edition. Have you guys found any errors yet? If you have, what errors have you found? If you guys are interested in some of the errors that uh, we have found in previous classes, Leave me a comment down below and uh, we can talk about it. All right, so again, thanks for watching and like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I guess see you guys next time. All right. I'm out of memory. Uh, today's not my day. <laughs>